Hello everyone. Today I'm going to do the beginning of a series on some yoga conscious movement or poses for bone health. And I'm doing that at a friend's request and it's her birthday weekend. So happy birthday, Steph. Here's a little yoga for bone health. And what we're going to do is just going to go through a series of some poses. So I want to talk about each one of them and talk about the fact that there are always alternatives to doing them so that uh, no matter where you're at in your body, you're honoring your body, you're honoring the places that are tight and restricted and not over um, stretching or pressing. So this is about building strength and there is... Um, evidence in studies that doing yoga for 12 minutes a day does help prevent bone loss and increases the strength of bone density. So we're going to begin with child pose and you come down to the mat and on your knees and from your knees you can either have your knees together or your knees apart. And if anybody does this, either of these positions is not comfortable for you, you can prop blankets or bolsters or whatever you need to make it comfortable for you. And then you'll come forward and you can either have your arms straight out in front of you and you come down as close as is comfortable for you. Some people may need, I have uh, yoga blocks here. So you can, again, use a blanket. You don't need any special tools. Um, a yoga block if you have one, and you can put it either way, wherever you're comfortable. And you can either, <clears throat> again, have your knees together or apart. Your bottom is going toward the, your feet as you move forward. And again, you can have it as high up as is comfortable for you, and you can have your arms back like this, and this may be a modified version of child pose for you. And whatever child pose you choose to be in for this particular practice, just allow yourself to be in that pose and focus on the breath. And as you're taking the time to do these things for your body, really feeling into the muscles, focusing on your breath, you can even begin to visualize as you feel the strength of the tips of your fingers and the pads of your hands pressing into the mat, or if your hands are the other way, the backs of your hands pressing into the mat as you feel it up your arms into your shoulders and as always pulling the shoulders back and down away from the ears as you press back and feel the length in your spine and imagining that spine the spinal column filled with white light Imagining that light traveling throughout your entire skeletal system, your bones, your marrow, <clears throat> the fascia surrounding each bone, every joint filled with luminous healing light. As you breathe and focus on your breath, And whenever you're ready, you can slowly begin to rise, placing your hands in front of you, shoulder width apart, placing your knees hip width apart. If this is not comfortable on your knees, you can roll up a towel or a blanket and put it under your knees. If this is not a comfortable hand position for you because you have issues with your wrist, which make an appointment and we can do some MFR around that. But for now, you can place the weight on the flats of your fingers. 
like two fifths shoulder width apart and you can rotate the shoulders however is comfortable for you you can rotate them toward the front of the room or you can rotate them to the side or some people might be comfortable with the crease of the elbow facing the top of the mat and so you just form this very stable position of tabletop pressing it to the mat <clears throat> with either your knuckles or the pads of your hands and fingers and the tops of your feet and your knees and your shins pressing into the mat as well. Feeling the strength of the mat and the ground supporting you. Ultimately, Mother Earth supporting you. And pulling strength from that. Up through your hands, up through your legs, your arms. All the way up to your shoulders. And again, you can allow your neck to hang softly or you can have your spine with that natural curve shape. And holding this position for a while as you pull in your abdomen, but yet allowing your diaphragm to move freely, creating space between your lumbar spine and your thoracic spine. Now, an alternative to doing this position or an add-on to this position can be experimenting with raising your opposite arm, arm and your opposite leg, your toes pointing toward the wall behind you and your fingers pointing straight ahead of you. You can choose a focal point on the floor somewhere in front of you, or you can look forward. I don't particularly care for this one because it doesn't feel good on my neck, so I'm going to honor that. And you can hold this position as you notice the shifting in the micro movements of the standing knee. You can begin to incorporate breath and movement. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And these are just options. And you can, of course, if you're doing something on one side, it's always good to do it on the opposite side. Notice if you feel any difference in the stability from one side to the other. And you can continue with that as long as you'd like. And whenever you're ready, you can slowly begin to lift the chest, the neck, rotating the shoulders outward. And for this one, it is a good idea to have the fingers like a star or the fists if your wrists are sore. And just beginning to do some cat-cow, which is stretching the spine, looking upward on the inhale, and on the exhale, rounding the back. Really taking your time with this one and taking your time with each inhale, filling the lungs to capacity and every exhale. Often I like to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. People generally develop a preference. Of which, which they prefer to do to inhale or to exhale. And for me, it's exhaling. I can inhale to a certain point, but I can exhale for a very, very long time. And so whenever you're ready, from there, you can just begin to return to a seated position on the mat. You can either return to your knees or you can put a block underneath you, which I find 
helpful whether whether you want to be on your knees or if you want to be in uh, easy pose which I used to joke because easy pose was one of the poses that I just could not do comfortably and so I learned to accommodate for my own body and just that little bit of elevation of the block two and a half inches makes a huge difference and where I could not do this before, I can now sit comfortably. And with the MFR approach, it's really finding a sweet spot for you where you're going to be comfortable. Now I have more, I'm going to do a little series, but I just wanted to start with some simple poses that you could do, child pose, tabletop, cat cow, and a little bit of movement incorporating. And in the next segment, we'll do another series of poses. And what you can do is string them all together and make them one practice, or you can pick and choose as you like. So I hope you like these, and yeah, you can thank Steph for that. <laughs>